So Wimbledon just around the corner. There are some players that have a lot to defend at Wimbledon. Of course, it's one of the biggest tournaments in the world. It's worth 2,000 points for the champions and a lot of points for the players that make the semifinals and beyond as well. Let's go have a look at the players that have the most to gain and the most to lose at Wimbledon this year. Let's start on the WTA side and the players that have the most to lose at this year's Wimbledon. Svetlina. Last year made the semifinals. She's 21 in the world currently. 780 points on the line. If she does get that far, she'll be able to keep her ranking. But man, if she doesn't make it at least to the quarterfinals, her ranking is going to drop. And at 21 in the world, that makes up a majority of her ranking. Sabalenka also made the semifinals last year. She's number three in the world currently. And if she doesn't make it to that semifinal, she could also drop down the ranking. So a lot of points there on the line for her. On Jabur, her top 10 ranking is at stake. She has 1,300 points from last year's final. She's currently number 10 in the world. Really, really dangerous position for her if she doesn't at least make it to the second week. And Von Drusova has the most to lose. 2,000 points, six in the world. And also those 2,000 points make up so much of her ranking. But if she does lose, let's say second round, she could really drop down the rankings, not just out of the top 10, but sort of down towards number 20. There's some players there that have a lot to lose at this year's Wimbledon. Having a look at the players that have a lot to gain, Maria Sakri, she's currently nine in the world. She has a lot to gain at every Grand Slam, unfortunately. This hasn't been doing well at the Slams. She's only got 10 points on the line this year. I lost the first round last year at Wimbledon. So if she is able to turn her Grand Slam form around, maybe make a fourth round or something. She could actually help her ranking. Coco Goff, number two in the world currently, has no points to defend. Just that first round, the 10 points, and the way that she plays and the way she's been playing, especially last week on the grass, we expect her to do well, so she has a lot to gain at this year's Wimbledon. Danielle Collins, she only made the second round last year. She's 11 in the world currently, could get back in the top 10 if she does do well at Wimbledon this year, and of course, with her game, you can expect that she's gonna at least win a couple of matches with that big game. And Zhang, she's only got a first round to defend from last year. Number eight in the world currently, she could really solidify her her spot in the top 10, especially because the majority of her points are coming from that Australian Open final at the start of the year. So they're the players there that have a lot to gain at this year's Wimbledon on the women's side. Over on the men's side of things and the players that have the most to lose, Daniel Medvedev, number five in the world, made the semifinals last year. He's got 720 points to lose at this year's Wimbledon. So his draw is really, really important, but also a lot of points on the line. Yannick Sinner, speaking of, he has 720 points as well from last year's semifinal. He is number one in the world though, and he has got the number one ranking by a long shot from second place Djokovic. So even even if he does have a bad Wimbledon, which would be a massive shock, he probably still stays number one. Speaking of Djokovic, number two in the world currently, he's got 1,200 points on the line because we don't even know if he's going to play Djokovic at this stage. So if he doesn't do well and the knee does cause him problems and he gets upset in the first couple of days, a lot of points there to drop. And Alcaraz, he has the maximum points to drop. He's got 2,000 points from winning last year's tournament, number three in the world currently. So again, it really just helps Yannick Sinner because the guys that are just behind him have a lot of points to lose and he has a little bit to gain, especially if he does end up winning the tournament. He could really push ahead even further against these guys or ahead of these guys. So those guys have the most to lose at Wimbledon this year. The players with the most to gain, Casper Ruud. Now, doesn't take grass very seriously. He's number eight in the world currently, but if he does end up winning a couple of matches, he'll actually really help his ranking. So maybe not a bad thing for him to maybe try a little bit more on the grass and hopefully get a couple of good matches under his belt and good wins. Maybe he could do something and help his ranking going into the Olympics, of course, after Wimbledon. Sasha Zverev, he's number four in the world currently, has so much to gain. Only made the third round last year, 90 points on the line. Not really known for his grass court tennis hasn't really won against top 10 guys or even top 20 guys on grass in his career but if he does get a good draw he might be able to get to the second week add some points to his title tommy paul just won queen's club number 12 in the world he has a good wimbledon he could make it into the top 10 for the first time and he's also got form that he can play on grass so tommy paul by the end of wimbledon could be a top 10 guy he only made the third round last year and alex dimonor currently nine in the world he's got 45 points from a second round last year he could also solidify his top 10 spot for a couple of months if he does play on the grass really well and also is known to be good on grass. He won a title last week to start the grass court season. So a couple of guys there that aren't really known for their grass tennis that could get some points, but some guys there that are proven grass court guys really have a good upside when it comes to the ranking points. So there it is. The most to gain, the most to lose for the men and the women going into Wimbledon. And it's going to be really tough for especially Djokovic, who has a lot of points to defend and a knee problem to stay in that kind of number, number two, three spot. Of course, Zverev, if he does have a good Wimbledon and Djokovic, for example, doesn't, or even Alcaraz doesn't, Zverev could overtake them in the rankings. It just depends on how far Zverev can go. Not really really known for his grass court tennis. Of course, it's much, much better on clay as we saw at the French Open. But let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most excited to see do well at Wimbledon this year? Or who are you most nervous for at Wimbledon this year? Because of course, there's players like Von Drusseva, who has a lot of points on the line. Of course, Elkris has a lot of points on the line. I'm excited for Tommy Paul. I reckon Tommy Paul might be top 10 by the end of this tournament because of what he just did in Queens Club and also his upside into Wimbledon. He gets a good draw. We might see him in the top 10 by the end of the tournament. But Wimbledon just around the corner and those are the players that have the most to lose and most to gain.